and welcome to this channel. I'm Claire and I love talking about Abhidharma, women's histories and the weird wonderful ways these two subjects sometimes intersect. Here we talk about LGBTQI representation, sword lesbians, awesome weapons, anything I want to talk about really in this weird little niche corner of the internet. Hi, welcome, enjoy your stay, have a seat and have a glass of something. Maybe a glass of sparkling apple juice, maybe a glass of water, a cup of tea or a glass of champagne. Today let's talk about champagne opening bottles swords. Let's try this again. Today let's talk about the weird and wonderful practice of opening champagne bottles with swords. Sabrage is the weird and wonderful practice of opening bottles of champagne with a sword. But not just any sword, specifically a sabre. What is a sabre? Well, it's a backsword. Okay, so what's a backsword? The best way to describe the backsword is that it is single. What this means in practice is that the backsword has a single edged blade and has a single grip. So you grip it with one hand and it is sharp on one side of the blade. But you won't use two hands to wield it and it won't be a double edged sword, but it's still a badass. A single badass. Actually what it has going for it instead of another cutting edge is a flat edge on the opposite edge of the sharp blade. Um, hence a back sword. It's got a flat back edge. In the case of the sabre this type of back sword is curved so it's a curvy single and its particular shape and design make it ideal for cutting and thrusting which will be important because you'll see. So sabres already exist for a long period of time in different time periods and contexts but for our purposes we're focusing on the European sabres hence the sabres that would eventually lead to the whole sabre tradition. So for now let's focus on European sabres who would have made their uh, debut on the sword European scene as early as medieval Europe introduced by the Magyar which are a group and nation most commonly associated with modern day Hungary. And they also would have been influenced by the expansion and influence of Turkish populations throughout Europe. So these are already recognisably curvy blades. So you had a look at them and you thought, well, yeah, that kind of looks like a sabre, right? But they would achieve their final boss form in the 17th century. The term itself, sabre, was derived from the Polish Hungarian terms zabla. Uh, probably pronouncing that wrong, although obviously other variations existed. And this zabla, or sabre, was a weapon that was primarily associated with the hussars. So who are the hussars? Well, a hussar would be the member of a specific type of cavalry class that would have originated in Central Europe, in countries such as Hungary as well as Poland. And originating in the 15th, 16th centuries, they were initially hired quite a lot by Western European countries to fight in their various wars, petty feuds, you know, it's Europe, so there's always something going on, I say, as a, as a European. Before these Western European countries eventually raised their own homegrown hussar troops. So there are various types of hussars. Some are heavy cavalry, so they already had quite a lot of armour. Some are light cavalry, which is mainly what we associate the hussars with. Some of them have wings, yes, you, yeah, wings. I don't know either. But what kind of ties them together, at least in my opinion, is also their very, very distinctive sense of dress. They look fabulous. Whatever army the hussars are part of, Whatever nationality they end up being, the hussars are flamboyant as heck. Many hussars traditionally had moustaches. They would also have a pelisse. It is a short fur-edged jacket which they could wear as a kind of a jacket but also kind of draped fancifully over one shoulder. And they also had a tunic called the dullman. And they also had a fur military cap which is also called a busby. They would also usually wear different colours based on the troop 
in which they were part of and the whole lot would be really ornately decorated i'm talking embroidery like shiny stuff just the, the, the whole the whole thing we could talk a lot about the ways in which the hussars type of dress actually inspired lots of different types of military fashions throughout Europe but also came to influence men and women's mainstream fashion but the specific way they come into play here is as a key part of the Napoleonic Wars so we've got Napoleon right he is now an emperor and he's going to make it everybody's problem and by everybody I mean the rest of Europe he ended up losing but you know before that he was he was just kind of moving around Europe, fighting his wars. Having a good time? Questionable. But basically, everyone at the time, whichever side they were on in the Napoleonic Wars, were like, I want some hussars in my army. And Napoleon's army was no different. At the time, they would have been travelling throughout Europe, accumulating victories and some defeats, and would have travelled to various aristocratic domains which previously would have been under Austrian rule. They would have been in many situations in which they wanted to celebrate a victory or commemorate a defeat by opening up bottles of champagne. We also have an apocryphal quote from Napoleon himself around champagne. Champagne! In victory, one deserves it. In defeat, one needs it. So there you go. Any party Napoleon was involved in champagne would also be involved. So let's face it, this probably happened for the first time if we just kind of take into account all of human history of, of doing weird stuff when Asar had too much to drink and probably was doing a weird bet with a friend like, hey Pierre-Henri, I bet you can't open this bottle of champagne with a saber. And Pierre-Henri's like, well, <laughs> watch me try, <laughs> whatever could go wrong. And hence, history was made. A French term, à la usard, means doing something quickly, spontaneously. So you can imagine a situation where instead of taking, you know, maybe a few more seconds to just uncork the bottle of champagne, like it's not extremely difficult to do, a hussar would just grab a sword and aim to do it as quickly as possible for maximum flamboyant effect. But let's look at how. How do you actually open a bottle of champagne with a sword using this technique of savage. Well, I have a bottle of fake champagne. It's essentially sparkling apple juice. I, I'm not going to buy a bottle of champagne for a YouTube video. What are you kidding me? My initial thought was that if you wanted to open a bottle of champagne with a sword, what you'd be focused on is bringing it open with the sharp end, right? In fact, it's the blunt edge of the sword that's going to do the heavy lifting. Okay, so let's... So, let's read about the way in which sabrage actually happens. Let's not actually do it because let's... Imagination is a powerful, powerful thing. So, you slide the blunt edge of the sabre across the body of the bottle to the neck to, in one swift gesture, break the top away. The impact of the blunt edge of the blade separates the collar and its cork from the neck, leaving a clean break and champagne a pouring. I'm just going to open it the traditional way and hope that this video does not immediately become a huge mess. And champagne a pouring. Probably should have done this at the beginning of the video. I've just had champagne sip all video. So that's already pretty interesting, right? But the story of champagne bottle opening with swords by Hassars also has an alternate origin story. And it features a badass woman. And this is Madame Clicou Bonsardin, aka the great lady of champagne, aka Widow Clicou, whose brand of champagne, Veuve Clicou, still bears her name to this very day. This highly successful champagne producer in 19th century France, as one of her nicknames indicates, was made a widow. Her husband died, and at the age of 27, she inherited his business. Under her rule, using her expertise in terms of champagne production, the business absolutely flourished, and she was really at the head of it all. And so, still in quite a unique position as a 19th century 
businesswoman and widow being able to conduct her own business and being really, really good at it and being very successful, very rich. But by all accounts, Madame Picot did not just love making her business thrive, she also liked to party. According to legend, she would party with Napoleon's officers and offer them bottles of champagne. And according to that same legend, they would try to impress this young, successful, rich widower by opening the bottles of champagne in front of her with their swords. Because women love cool sword tricks, right? And since this is all subject to legend and anecdote and did it happen, did it not happen anyway, I like the venture. Did Madame Plicot ever use a saber to open up one of her own bottles of champagne? If so, that would be a power move. So I'm not saying that happened, but I'm also saying it could have happened. So whether or not Madame Plicot was fond of Napoleon's hussars and their ways of opening her bottles of champagne, business was still business because when Napoleon was defeated in 1814, she sent a ship full of her champagne bottles to St. Petersburg. Hey everybody, wanna celebrate Napoleon's defeat? Here's a whole shipment full of my champagne. And she was a step ahead and literally a ship ahead of all the other champagne production competitors. So here's to you, uh, Madame Clicquot. So today you probably wouldn't open a bottle of champagne with a saber to celebrate defeat over your enemies, but maybe you would. But you would still encounter it in special ceremonies, such as, namely, weddings. Which, you know, recently has been a bit tricky, with in-person weddings not being so much of a thing, but who knows, maybe out there there are some Zoom weddings or social distance weddings taking place in which sabotage is still happening. And if so, cheers to that. But thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what other kind of subjects you want to hear about related to swords. Follow me on my social media if you want. Um, it's all in the description down below. Stay safe, sword lovers, and see you in another video.